Hello hackers! Welcome to Pwn College. I'm Jan and today we're going to be talking about assembly. Alright, recall that all roads lead to the CPU, whether you're writing in Python, C, or whatever your programming language of choice, eventually things get either compiled just in time, ahead of time, or interpreted by a binary program, and in the end, actions described by your program are taken by the CPU as it parses binary code representing them. All right, binary code is hard for humans. If I told you uh, 01010101, you might not be able to recognize the semantic meaning of that. And even if you could recognize that, there's, I'm sure, a lot of other binary combinations that you would be like, why are you telling me random digits? I am just a human with limitations in my brain, so I can't just remember a lot of different binary. Anyways, all right, that conversation has gone on too long, but the point is humans have a hard time with binary code. And so, of course, to uh, deal with machines, we created a direct representation of the binary code that tells us what it is doing. This representation is called assembly. Binary code and assembly are equivalent. We're not talking about something like Python where you have one statement that you make and it causes the CPU to do a million different things eventually. No, one assembly instruction is one action, that specific action taken by the CPU. It is a direct, direct view of the binary code. Not necessarily a higher level programming language, a very, very low level programming language. All right, the other thing is the assembly is what the CPU will execute. There are caveats, there's always caveats, but generally speaking, assembly code is as close as you can get to your, what your CPU is actually doing. Now, what the hell is assembly? Well, first, let's start with the history, right? Assembly was developed in the late 40s, 19, uh, the early 50s by Kathleen Booth for one of the earliest computers ever built. In fact, the second stored program computer, that's a computer that could hold its own programs, um, had an assembler already, had an assembly language. And assembly language, of course, is called assembly because it was assembled by an assembler into binary code. Um, as I was reading up on the history of assembly, someone was saying, hey, maybe we should have called it assembly with two E's as like a, the, the object of a, of, anyways, assembly, tell your friends. So. Assembly tells the CPU what to do, right? Basically, these, these, this assembly that is a direct representation of the binary code, the binary code that is associated with the assembly instructions, basically cause the CPU to take discrete actions. And by doing that in a sequence in big combinations, you create complex programs. In a similar way that if you were telling people what to do in, let's say, English, you would um, use sentences, like I'm using sentences right now to try to convey this knowledge. Uh, assembly has sentences as well. They're called instructions. And these sentences in assembly are basically made up of verbs. That's what you want the CPU to do. Um, and uh, those are operations and nouns, which is what you want the CPU to do the verb to. And that is an operand. And that's it. It's simple. In fact, it's by far the simplest program language you will encounter. Assembly is the simplest. You cannot get simpler. Um, of course, it, this makes sense. A CPU is not some complex, all knowable, crazy, super smart thing. It is with all of the crazy software we've developed on top of it. But the CPU itself is, is, is simple. I mean, it's very complex, obviously, but you know it's it's not as complex as your brain, um, and so since the CPU has to fundamentally think assembly, and your brain is way more complex than a CPU, even if you don't believe it yourself, know that you can master assembly in a week. It's the simplest programming language. It's where computer science education should start, uh, but uh, unfortunately, I'm not in charge of the world. All right, anyways, assembly. Uh, 
We mentioned uh, nouns and verbs, so let's talk about these. Nouns is what the instructions will be dealing with. What does a computer do? It, ow, it handles data, right? Computers handle data and they do it very, very well and very quickly. There are three types of data that we'll talk about in this lecture series. One is data that the, the CPU is directly handling, like imagine you have money, money that you're, you're holding. That's data that the CPU is directly working on. Second, uh, that, that, that yeah, uh, realized my slides are a little, little contradictory, but the second is data that is close at hand, right? Uh, in here, I have a cash register. So cash that you're actively uh, working with is boom, in your hand, cash in hand. Cash that you can work on close at hand is in a cash register. If you need a place to then store that cash, you have a lot of different ca uh, uh, hmm. This is not good. I don't want to restart the whole lecture. So we're just going to YOLO restart this slide. Just pretend. Maybe I'll edit it in uh, later because this slide kind of went off the rails. Uh, first, I'm going to pause it and fix the wording so it doesn't screw me up. I'll be right back. Are we back? Were, were we ever gone? All right, I'm just gonna assume we're, we're back. I and mean, we are back. I don't, hopefully uh, we were gone. Otherwise you just watched me just type on the computer for a while. Anyways, we're back. All right, I fixed the slide so it doesn't bug me as much. Um, hopefully you won't see me rambling about this and redoing things, but uh, let's face it, probably this will never get edited out. It'll be there for posterity. You will. By this point, this is several modules into your education. You're used to uh, this probably. Any anyway, okay, yeah, yeah, let's let's move on. Okay, so nouns in assembly. The CPU works on data. That's what it does. That's why we created computers to crunch data, uh, and and of course, in aggregate, this data becomes YouTube videos and 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 video games and all of this fun stuff. Now three main types of data that we're going to uh, talk about and, and we'll have different lectures for each one. One is data that we directly provide to the CPU and say, hey, here's some data. Like if you're handing out cash, uh, money. Let's talk because that's, that's a whole different collision of terms. Second is data that's close at hand. The CPU receives some data from you and it puts it in its register in its cache register, in its register file. We'll talk about that. Third, if there's too much money in the register, it might take that money out and put it away into the bank vault, into a safe deposit box with an address, right? That is memory. We're gonna talk about these three uh, contexts in which we encounter data. Um, then, what are the verbs? Well, the word verbs are what we might wanna do with the data. And here are some potential verbs that are highlighted in clever ways that actually correspond to assembly. We can add some data together. That's pretty simple. Subtract some data, multiply data, divide data. Very simple. We can move data from one little box in our cash register to another little box. Cool. We can compare data. Say, is, is this bigger than that? We can test other properties. We can say, oh, hey, is, uh, you know, is this an odd number or whatever, right? Like uh, there's a lot you can do. Um, and boom, now you almost know some assembly. That's pretty cool. It's really, really that simple. Now, what makes it more complex is that assembly, again, is a direct translation of binary code as it is ingested by the CPU. This has implications. That means a different CPU is going to have different binary code, right? Uh, let me move myself so you can see. Oops, that's not me, that's the slide. Oh my God, okay, there we go. Um, you, can, uh, you can imagine that a different CPU with slightly different ways that it works, x86 versus ARM, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, it's gonna be slightly different. And that's fine. 
there's space for all of these different CPUs, but not in my class. Here in this module, they're going to be primarily talking about x86. x86 is the best architecture. It's a, it's, it's a very fun architecture. It's a, one of the original kind of OG architectures and uh, it is my personal favorite. So that's what you will learn. It's the architecture running on most personal computers around the world, um, but it is increasingly being outcompeted by ARM, which is running on your phone, regardless of what phone you have, uh, possibly your router, maybe your computer, if you have a recent MacBook or some other very, very hipster device. Um, but regardless of dialect, an assembly instruction will look like this. It's either just an operation, just a verb, or it's an operation that works on one operand, just a verb and a noun, or it's an operation that works on two operands, for example, adding two numbers together, or three operands, um, or something along these lines. That's pretty simple. All right, there are also like sub-dialects. Um, so we're talking about x86 and Intel created x86, right? Um, in fact, they originally created like the 8008 TPU and then they created the 8085 and then the 8086 and then that evolved into the 81, then 2, then 386 and that is basically modern x86 that uh, actually, this isn't the full story, that uh, AT&T, AT AT&T, AMD then came along and created 64-bit x86 and that is the x86 we know and love and will be using in this module and in this class. Now, AT&T came along and said, oh, this is a cool architecture. Why don't we just ruin everything by creating a really bad, really bad, like really, really, really bad assembly syntax for it? Why would they do that? They, it would have caused them, I mean, I don't know, maybe it would have caused them something, but like presumably they didn't have to do this, but they did it. Um, and so you have Intel x86 assembly, and AT&T x86 assembly. Now remember, assembly is a direct mapping to that binary code, so they both mean the same thing. They both map to the same binary. It's just a different way of saying the same things. Um, but the AT&T one is terrible. So we're gonna use the Intel syntax. They created x86. Why would you just not use their syntax? I mean, that's if you baked an awesome dish and you came up with a great sauce for it and someone came in and said, you know what, I'm just going to put ketchup on that. It's not very cool. They should have baked their own dish. Anyways, that's um, x86. That's assembly. I hope I've convinced you that assembly is going to be a breeze to learn. And in the rest of the videos on this module, that's exactly what we'll do.